First off, congrats on your new MacBook Pro. By now, you've probably already unboxed yours and gone through the initial setup process, but now you might be wondering what to do next. So in this video, I'm going to make sure that you start off right by showing you the first 16 things to do after booting up a MacBook Pro for the first time. Now, these are going to be tips, tricks, and just things you need to know to get the most from your Mac. Okay, so the very first thing I always do when getting a new Mac is going into the settings, the system settings, and we're going to change the trackpad speed and direction and multiple other things as well so go to the bottom over here and then go to trackpad and from here you want to change the tracking speed you probably don't need it as slow as it's already set to i usually have mine closer to the highest end one of the you know two below the fastest speeds right here so we'll just do this one for now and then you also have click and you also have something i would change right here is tap to click that way you don't have to actually click down on the trackpad to click on something. Like if I wanted to click on minimize right here, I could just tap on the trackpad instead of actually clicking on it. Now you can still click, but you don't need to. You can tap to click as well, which is really nice. And then going over to scroll and zoom, I always turn off natural scrolling. Now this is gonna be you know, highly debated. I like actually scrolling in the direction that I am moving my fingers. So you may or may not want that, but you can change that right there, along with all of these other settings right here, which I leave as default. And then go over to more gestures or something I wanna change over here as well. And that setting is app expose. So this is off by default, but I like having this set to swipe down with three fingers. That way, if I swipe down with three fingers, I can see the different windows I especially use this for web browsing so I usually have multiple windows open so if I swipe down with three fingers I can see my windows very easily and tap on one of those windows that I want to open and then the final trackpad setting I like to change right away is inside of accessibility so if we go up to our accessibility settings and then down to pointer control and then to trackpad options I like to have use trackpad for dragging and change the dragging style to a three finger drag so what that does is if I open up let's just say a a finder window right here and I go ahead and have my three fingers I could move it just from putting those three fingers on the trackpad and moving that window around I like doing that to easily move windows around without having to click on it you know fully click down and move it's just another way to not actually have to physically press down on the trackpad you can just do a three finger gesture here to move windows next up let's change some display settings so first off this wallpaper is the default wallpaper and i think it has to go i think we need something a little bit more unique so we're going to go to the wallpaper section right here and we're going to change that wallpaper so you can either choose a dynamic desktop which changes based on light or dark mode and then also light and dark desktop as well which also has two different modes one for light mode one for dark mode and if you see this little cloud icon that does mean you have to download them so if you click on that little uh, cloud icon it will download those wallpapers and you'll be able to apply it right from the settings here and if you do not see the exclusive wallpapers for the m2 pro and m2 max macbook pros that's because you need to update your software which is another little bonus tip i'm going to throw in here if you go to general and then to software updates if you did not update your software in the initial setup process you need to go ahead and do that right away that way you get all of the new features and security fixes so go ahead in here and update your software but anyways going back to our display settings if we go down to displays right here you want to change this from default to more space especially if you have a 16 inch model and this just gives you much more real estate on your screen i use this for the 14 inch model but you especially need to do this if you have a 16 inch model and now let's head over to appearance and from here you're going to change if you want to have light mode or dark mode or just have it set to auto now what's even more important here is the accent color so if you change the accent color that's going to change your accents as you can see it turns purple pretty much everything throughout the os is going to change to the accent color even if you go into here into your finder you will see the icons over here on the left have changed depending on what color we choose for our accent color. So you can change that to whatever you would like. I'm just gonna do like a blue color here to match with my current wallpaper. You can even change the highlight color here as well. So if you like highlight text, you could change what that looks like. So if I select high there, you can see it's blue, but if I change this to purple, you will see that it changes to purple when I select that text. Also down here is show scroll bars. Now I would recommend turning this on always. That way you can always rely on the scroll bar being there. Sometimes in certain applications it's finicky and it doesn't show up. So I would recommend having that turned on we're also going to go down to the lock screen section here and change some of these settings so when your display dims and when your display turns off it can be pretty annoying especially if you're actually still using your computer so you might want to change some of these in here so it says start screensaver when inactive two minutes is way too short i would recommend having that to like at least 10 minutes you know because sometimes you just sit there you're still using your computer but you don't want the screensaver to start after just two minutes of not pressing on 
the keyboard or the trackpad. So I'm going to change that to like first for 30 minutes right there. And then the other ones you could change as well require password. I wouldn't put a super high time on the password just because we have touch ID right there and it makes it really easy to input our password. So really none of these you need to change besides that first one in my opinion, but they are here for you. Something else you probably want to change is to have the battery percentage up in the status bar. So right now you could see it only shows an icon. You have to click on it to see our 71% battery there, but I always like having the percentage up there. So we're going to change that. So if you go down to your settings and then go to the control center right here and then swipe down until you get to battery and you will see we have show in a percentage. And now when you click on that, it shows the percentage up there without having to click on it. And then the final thing we'll talk about for display settings are hot corners. So if you go to desktop and dock and then scroll down until you see hot corners in the bottom, you could apply certain things to different corners of your laptop here. So if we want to do a quick note for the top left, for example, if I go up to the top left, you could see that invokes a quick note, whereas that would never happen in any other corner but the bottom right where it's by default so you could change that to do certain actions based on the corner so like if i change that i'll show you one more time to launch pad now all of a sudden we go up to the top left of the screen and it launches our launch pad. So that's a quick and easy way to do certain actions. The next thing you want to do is take advantage of high power mode for intensive tasks. So this is only going to be for the 16 inch max model. So the M1 max or the M2 max. And this basically allows the fans to run at higher speeds than default, which leads to higher performance. So to do this, we want to go to our system preferences. So we're going to go to our system settings down here and we're going to go to battery. And then from here, you will see energy mode and we're going to change this. You can see high power right here. So you can have it set to either on power adapter or on battery or both. Now, of course, if you want to get to this quicker, you could just click on the battery up in the status bar and then click on battery settings and it will take you right here. Now, even though we're going to have good battery life, you also need to know how to toggle on low power mode just to squeeze as much battery out as possible. And that's going to be in the same section and battery here. And you will see that we have low power mode. And again, you could always change this by clicking up here and then going to battery settings and changing that to low power. I would recommend doing that when you're out and about and you may not have access to a charger, similar to what you would do on your iPhone. The next thing you need to do is get familiar with continuity camera as your webcam. So if you have an iPhone, you can use your iPhone's camera and microphone phone as your webcam and it's going to be much better than the built-in 1080p webcam on your MacBook Pro. Now this works wired or wirelessly and your Mac will automatically switch to using your iPhone as a camera when you bring it close to your Mac and once your phone is locked. You just have to make sure that both devices are on the same Wi-Fi network and that Bluetooth is enabled and that you're signed in to the same Apple ID. And you can even add video effects like portrait mode and you have center stage. Everything just works so much better when you use your iPhone as your camera instead of the built-in webcam. Okay, so now let's move on to some other tasks. Now, the next thing you want to do is know about the spacebar. The spacebar is very powerful on the Mac, and what you can do if you see a file in Finder is you can tap on the spacebar to see a preview of that file. As you can see here, I see a preview of it. Now, you could just simply press and then press again to remove that preview or just go away from that preview, or you could hold the spacebar to view it and then right once you let go, it will go away. I use the space bar all the time to see the file size of certain applications. So if you go to an application or a file and you press on the space bar, you can see the size of that specific file, which comes in handy all the time. Also in Finder, I don't like this view personally, so I like to go to the list view. So if you click on this right here, it will show all of these icons, all of these files as a list view, and you could also change what shows right here. So it only shows name, kind, and date last opened, but I always like to see how much space everything is taking up. So if we double click right here, right click right here, if you just put two fingers down on the trackpad and click in, you can change what is shown here. So I like to add size, so that way the size is right here. You could also move this. So if we drag this over, we can move this maybe to the end right here or just wherever you want it to be. I'll just put it in the middle of those two right there. And instead of date last opened, we could do maybe just date modified and we can remove the date last open. So we're gonna remove it by just 
clicking on that and we're going to move date modified all the way to the end and now this is much more like what i like using in my regular workflow now we can also change default application so if you go to a file right here and you right click and then go to get info you will see a lot of information about that specific file now if you go to name and extension right here you can change the name of the file you can hide the extension you can do all that but if you go to this right here where it says open with you could change the default application so now if you didn't want to open this in preview you maybe want to open this in let's just say quicktime player for example you can do that and then click on change all and it says are you sure you want to change all similar documents to open with quicktime and if you click on continue now every time you click on a photo it's going to open up by default in quicktime player instead of preview and you can do that with any application and speaking of files one thing that drives me crazy is auto opening files especially media files like music or movies that are downloaded from Safari and we can actually change that so they don't automatically open up the iTunes or the music application so if you go to your Safari right here and click on it up in the menu bar and then go to settings you will see at the very bottom here we have open safe files after downloading you want to turn that off that way the safe files do not open after you download them the next thing you want to do is configure your iMessage and FaceTime settings so I don't know about you guys but I really do not like having my computer ring on FaceTime every time my phone gets a FaceTime call I only like having FaceTime calls go on my phone and not my computer now iMessages I don't mind as much but I still like turning it off for certain emails and especially for my phone number so let's go into messages first and you're gonna to go to messages up top and then go to settings and then go to iMessage and from here you will see you can be reached for messages at and I would recommend turning off your phone number unless you like sending messages from your Mac that's different then obviously keep that there but me personally I only like having like a certain email on my computer when it comes to iMessage so you can change all of that right there you could also enable or disable messages and iCloud where it backs up your messages and then let's go over to FaceTime right here and this is one that I really just don't like having turned on you can see we do get the little splash screen here for continuity camera which we did already talk about so we're gonna go to FaceTime up top and then go to settings and then we're just gonna remove all of these different emails and phone numbers that I don't want coming to my computer and especially this one right here calls from iPhone I don't like having calls from my iPhone coming right here so you could change that as well okay so the next thing you need to do is use spotlight search for literally Literally everything for opening applications for searching Google searching files doing math problems pretty much everything so to invoke this very easily of course you can press right up here on the little search bar up in the address bar right here up in the menu bar you can press on that but a quicker and easier way to do that is just press command spacebar so just get used to pressing command spacebar no matter what application you're in or wherever you're at you could always press command spacebar and it will pull up the spotlight search right here and you could type in whatever you want so if I wanted to open up maps I could type in maps and then press on return and it will open up maps right away so like I said this is the quickest and easiest way to open up applications or to search for Google so if I search you know uh, when is the next full moon and then press on return right here we could go to search the web and it will automatically open up Google and that's easier than just going into Google and typing that in or if I have a math problem if I want to know what four five six seven two one times eight nine zero one two is it shows me that right there right away now what's really cool is that you could even search for your photos so if I search for let's just say Tesla for example right here and I scroll down you will see it's actually showing photos from applications and it shows a photo that's already in my photos application which is pretty cool now you might notice that there's a lot of kind of miscellaneous results in here like maps you know like stocks PDF documents definition documents I don't really care about any of those and I don't want those to show up when I search for something in spotlight and the good thing about that is is we can actually change what results are shown in spotlight search so if we go back to our system settings down here which by the way I would recommend changing up your doc as well and kind of just moving this all the way over to wherever you always can press on it so I like taking mine all the way over here to the left it's just easier to access you could change that to wherever you would like but once you're in here you want to go down to the Siri and spotlight right here and from here you can change what is shown in your search results like for example I don't like for sure definitely not definition and you could turn off different things like you know fonts I don't want to search for fonts I don't want to search for presentations and you could just kind of change all these in here that way you don't have as much clutter when you search for something via spotlight search okay so moving these system settings and the doc reminded me that the next thing we need to do is organize 
customize and customize both the dock and the desktop. So first off, let's get rid of some of these things on the dock that we just simply do not need. There are too many applications down here that it's overwhelming. So for context, for example, I'm going to right click here, go to options, and we're going to remove that from the dock. And we're going to do the same for everything we just don't use. Like for all these things, I just simply do not use, at least on my Mac, like podcasts, I never use on my Mac all these different things down here you can remove. Now you can also add applications to the dock very easily as well. So when you open up an application, it will show in this section to the right of your dock. All you have to do is drag it over to your dock and then it will permanently be in there. Something else you might want to change is the orientation and the size of the dock. So if you right click on the dock and then go to dock settings, you could change things in here very easily. So you could change the size of the dock. You can make it really small or really large, whatever you would like to have right there. You could also have magnification. So if you turn the magnification on you can go ahead and see these applications closer up so that way if you have a small dock you could see what you're about to open up you know if you have magnification turned on so we're going to turn that down a little bit and make this a little bit smaller now you also have the position on screen so you could change this to the left or the right of your screen if you would like to and then you have a lot of other settings in here that you can go ahead and change i would just recommend going in there and changing whatever you like now something else that's not really showing right now because i don't have a lot on my desktop i'm going to add a few things to the desktop just so you guys can see this so we're going to move these to my desktop just so i could show you that when you start getting files on your desktop it can look really cluttered and really ugly so we're going to change that so we're going to right click on the desktop here and we're going to use stacks so when you click on use stacks you will notice that if i had three screenshots there it's going to take them all and put them into one icon called screenshots and if you click on that it will kind of expand that view so this just takes similar files and puts them into stacks for organization now you can also group these stacks by certain things as well so if you go back here and group stacks by you could group them by different things so kind is what it's set to default for but you could also do it by any of these that you have selected right here now while we're here i also like to go to show view options because i do like having my icon size smaller than 64 by 64. i usually like having it set to like 32 or 36 you know pretty small that way it's just not standing out and not looking so ugly on my desktop but you could change that to whatever you would like right there you could also change the grid spacing which is how much you know space you have right there you could change the text size the label position and show icons and show item info or not you might also want to customize this top bar right here so you could see we have our battery our quick time all of that but if you go into the control center right here you could actually drag certain things so if you wanted focus to be up in your status bar and you didn't want to have to click into the control center to get to it you could just drag this over right here and then all of a sudden we have that right there in the menu bar and it does not take it away from control center it just kind of adds it to the menu bar right here and you could do that for pretty much all of these the next thing you want to do is set up touch id for more than one finger I would highly recommend having at least a couple of fingers added in there one for each hand at least one for each hand so I personally like using my middle finger I don't know I just find it easier to, to you know kind of put on the sensor right there so I'm gonna add a fingerprint here and you will have to put in your passcode but you will go ahead and add this fingerprint so I'm gonna use my middle finger this time because I did my index finger to start with but it's always good to have at least one finger added in here or at least two fingers added in here one from each hand for touch ID and if you have an Apple Watch, I would highly recommend having Apple Watch turned on. That way, anytime your Apple Watch is on your wrist, it will unlock your Mac without you having to put in a passcode whatsoever. The next thing we're going to do is go into settings and go to our Apple ID section at the top, and we're going to go to iCloud. And from here, we're going to turn off iCloud Drive. So we're going to just simply turn this off because we don't want all of that data taking up storage from our iCloud plan. So I, even though I have a two terabyte plan, you know, putting all of my documents, all my screenshots, all my screen recordings onto my iCloud drive is just a waste of space in my opinion. And I would recommend removing that from the Mac if you need to, and just turn this off in general, right? Once you get your computer, just turn this off. Trust me, it takes up a lot of space and you're probably not gonna want that space, you know, being taken up by stuff in iCloud drive, like your documents. And this is also where you should go ahead and change all of your different iCloud settings as well. So if you don't want certain things syncing with iCloud, you could turn that off right here. The next thing you need to do is understand how to quickly take a screenshot or a screen recording so I'm currently screen recording right now and the way I did that was I pressed command shift 5 and it started a screen recording right there now also if you press command shift 3 
it will take a screenshot of the entire screen. So you can see we have the preview down here, and this is the screenshot that we just took with that simple combination of buttons. Now, if we press on Command Shift 4, that gives us this cursor right here where we can choose what we want to take a screenshot of. You can see there are no proportion limits or anything. You could take a certain screenshot of a certain you know page or anything on the desktop now that's nice but you could also press on command shift five and that will do the recording as i said i'm recording right now so i can't show you everything but once you press command shift five you have capture entire screen capture selected window or capture selected portion you can do any of those so if you do a window you know if i have a window pulled up it will only record that specific window and nothing else now a trick i always like telling people about is how to access secret menus and options so if you go into an application like anything even just the finder application right here if you press on one key that will open up a a secret menu so if you press on the option key and then right click on finder you will see that when I let go of option and when I re-click you will see different things show right here so we have hide others now this applies to so many different things like for example even in any application so if I go to an application and press on you know if I right click and then hold option I get the option to force quit so sometimes quit won't work but if you press and hold option and force quit and it will force quit that application when nothing else would work you can even do this in the menu up in the top left so if you click on the Apple logo and then hold down option up there you could see system information if you go to file, you will see always open with instead of just open with open and close window. We have delete immediately instead of move to trash. Just click on and hold option anytime you're anywhere in the OS in a menu and you will see different secret options that are not there by default. And the final thing you should do after getting your MacBook Pro is clean up the Finder application. So the sidebar is going to be a mess when you first get it. It's not gonna be everything you want. So you can remove certain things from there and add certain things to your sidebar. As you can see, mine looks much cleaner than what was there by default. And the reason for that is because number one, I like doing this view as a list view instead of as this grid view. Now, if you do like the grid view, you can right click right here as well and you could do clean up clean up by or you could do sort by and I would recommend turning on snap to grid that way everything is kind of just in line and in, in order you could do that for the desktop as well but I personally like having a list view here all the time now if we go up to the finder and then go to settings right here you could also change a lot of things as well so for instance if we go to the sidebar section you can remove and add certain things from the sidebar so you'll have tags by default but if you don't like tags right there, I personally do not use tags. You could just simply turn that off. Same with all of these right here. You could add or remove certain things from the sidebar. And then if you go to the advanced section, you could show or don't show file name extensions. Now, if you have the kind section right here, if you have kind right here showing up, you don't need extensions. And if you, again, don't remember how to do that, just right click and you can just select on kind and you can have certain things show up as your kind of filters here inside of finder you could also move this i don't like that being so long for the name so i can move that over that way we can fit in one more thing over there so like if i wanted to add let's just say uh if you do use tags we could add tags and then we could have that here as well it's an additional little section we can have for all of our files and then something else i would highly recommend changing is when performing a search do search the current folder so i hate how when i search for something inside of a folder it searches my entire mac and shows me unrelated files so if you have this set to search the current folder it will only search that current folder when you search for something and there are so many more mac tips i could have shared but i don't want to make this video an hour long but if you want to see more advanced tricks check out the video on the screen right now thanks for watching enjoy your macbook pro and stay tuned for more iphone and mac videos